In this module, we will work on workgroup versus domain in our Active Directory and Group Policy Management course. Now, why do we need to know about workgroup and domain? What is the reason behind this? The reason behind this, we need to know both because when you get a computer from, let's say, Dell or Lenovo or HP, you don't get it managed right you they don't send you a machine that is already managed by them they just sent you a fresh machine they may install an operating system for you and you have to configure it then or they may not do that they may just send you a some type of uh, you know ISO file or a USB or some type of media that you can put that operating system on so at that moment that computer is on work group so you do need to know how to change it from work group to domain because you want to now make it more managed so let's go to our powerpoint just to get some more understanding number one is work group number two is uh, domain so you can see work group there is no server required now let me give you a very basic example for work group you go to Best Buy you buy your laptop so when you buy your laptop you bring it home then you have let's say a router somewhere inside your home and then let's say you go to your room and you open the laptop and you get connected to this router basically now you can see that there was nothing in the middle you didn't need it any other uh, management server or nothing you just got connected because you knew the password number one and you were able to get into this machine because you have created your own admin and user and password or you could be a guest on that machine but you just get got into that machine because you knew the username and password it was given to you and you could only get into this machine so now imagine let's say someone in your house try to get into your machine they just get into your room they want to get into your machine they won't be able to do that unless they break into it which is a different thing but they won't be able to uh, basically log into any account because they don't know the account even if they see the account username they won't be able to use any other information like password because you have the password so even if they do like a switch user maybe other user or something like that they won't be able to log in even if they have one account on their machine let's say they have another laptop over here so they may have a username and password as well they may be connected to the same router but they have a separate username and password to get into their machine they cannot get into your you cannot get into theirs so now make this like a company now let's say you're working for a company and they didn't have any management so they may have one machine over here and multiply that with in 20 more machines so imagine everybody will need their own account to get in to their machines so now if they had an issue you need to go and help them you need to know their username and password they may even forget it now that's even more problem right there so then of course then you need to manage these machines all 20 machines you won't be able to do that easily because you need some type of management server in between so you can get into these machines with just one single account that won't work so there's a lot of issues in this area for business type of environment this may work for home because you don't need servers in the home you do need your own privacy yes this is a great uh, option for the home and I will show you how you can verify this stuff later on in this video but this is a clear simple example not too technical examples that's how people will define work group then if you come to the domain side of it this is how the companies are using networks so they get the same machine right here in this example but now in the middle they will have something like domain controller and that is where active directory will play a very big role because you can see user accounts are stored in active directory and then that server is basically active directory is installed inside that server of operating system so now this is like a king inside your network because all of these machines are connected to it through network and if you are the admin over here you can basically manage your machines from that single account so this person having an issue this person may be let's say locked out so you can from here you log into your machine 
somehow get connected to the Active Directory, which you're going to learn later on how to manage Active Directory from your machine. And then you basically unlock this person. This person may be saying that I cannot even get into my machine. Maybe this is dropped from the network. So still you can come back and troubleshoot this type of issues. Or this person may say I need to access a, let's say, a folder on the network. Now everything is connected so then the permissions and everything like that becomes very easy. And you can simply give this person an access to a folder on a network and then this person will get in with no issues. This person may say I need a software. Can you give me a software? So now if you're the admin over here, you can deploy the software by using your your softwares easily because you have you're in the network you have the access you can do uh, basically almost everything to help these users out and that would be the big difference between these two why people would prefer this in a company environment when they are even small medium large depending on what their requirements are not everybody uses active directory but most of the people in IT knows about active directory probably 98% of the IT professional will probably know this because and this is why you need to learn the skill so you can impress people now let's get into a little bit more uh, you know official type of understanding so you can see if you click on the work group you see this is a peer network work group so this could be a hub a Wi-Fi inside your computer inside your home network um, or any like say lab environment you go to the business and they may have a lab that is just connected to the switch and then it's not joined to any servers you're just managing them uh, as a group okay so if you look at the example of Active Directory right here it's uh, basically is a client server a lot of people also use uh, when we talk about Active Directory or domain network they, they may also use client server network um, has clients workstation as well as server or many servers as you can see in the figure the clients are labeled computer a b uh, laptop a and so on there's always there's also a file server and a directory server which is used to manage user accounts so in other words you have some type of switch right here inside that switch you see that there's a server that has a lot of uh, you know users so that could be your ad which is active directory installed on this this could be a domain controller as well then there's another server connected to active directory is joined to this network but this is serving files to this computer because of this guy right here because of the access because of the management if people can get into this files very very easily and if this was you right here you would be able to manage everybody from your machine in this network with no issue at all okay so now if we move on to the official um, understanding of what is active directory if people ask you it is a directory service available with the Windows Server platform. So when we talk about Active Directory, we're talking about Windows Server platform. We're not talking about Linux over here. AD Active Directory, that's Windows right there. It stores information in credential database and central database and allow users to have a single user account called a domain user account. Remember, whenever you add a user inside Active Directory, which you will later on find out practical, and when we add a user in Active Directory, that user is a, by default, a domain user account. Now you can then give it more rights, becoming more a domain admin, enterprise admin, stuff like that. But the user account is called domain user account. Just know this because people may ask you in the interview and this would be your official way to explain this. But you can also say that Active Directory is a management um, a client server management where you can manage other machines inside your business you can give a very uh, normal type of answer when it comes to stuff like that there's no official answer into this that you have to really talk about the way it is in here but it's good to have some some little bit of uh, uh, explanation like it's a central database and allow users to have a single user account called the main user so if you see that I think that's a good and solid answer okay so now moving on Inside the company, how does it work when we have an Active Directory? So just let's do a little bit of visual understanding. So if you if you come over here, you see this is a our um, um, image right here. Now this is coming from testout.com when we give this uh, type of uh, access in our live training. But here I'm using this image just so people can have a better understanding. So you can see right here, this is an executive office right here. And then we have this IT administration team. So these guys are going to be mostly 
coming over here and adding that server so this could be a data center right here and in here there will be this uh, let's say for example there's a server right here and that's ad right here we have installed ad either a physical server or a virtual server that doesn't matter uh, most likely a lot of people are using virtual server and they put windows server on it and then they install active directory domain services on that server so now you see that if you are sitting here first of all you your computer through the network somehow going to the jack wall whatever and coming over here and then you get connected to the network to that computer that computer is then joined to this active directory and now you basically have a management computer so usually you have access you have more access than other users that is why people will make you help this because then you can help these people right here so let's say for example in office 2 this is our accounting person this person locked themselves out because they were trying it multiple times so then what will happen you're not gonna go walk out there to unlock them you're just gonna go to your computer right here and go to the active directory through the management tools and then you will unlock this person through the network this is what we call a uh, managed environment because if this was a work group computer, it was no Active Directory in the middle, let's say, you would probably, you can use some other way to get into that, but most likely you would have just walked in there and then fixed it. What if this is like so many other people? Of course, even if you, this was on a network and there was no centralized management, still it's a painful job. Uh, it's not, it doesn't have to be just walking in there. It's just, it's very painful job than if you don't have some type of management going on. And there's uh, other benefits that management gives you too, which you will find out later on. But for now, just understand that this is how we use Active Directory to make our life very, very easy. Now, moving on, we're going to go into a little bit of uh, a, um, a realistic example of how do you determine which one is Active Directory and uh, how do people re actually test you in this stuff so here I'm gonna log into our server and after this um, video you're gonna find out um, how to set up your Active Directory lab uh, in your own virtual box uh, for free or you can use our servers and later you can use your premium access labs if you want to use that in this lab example which you will configure this after our section uh, this section uh, for now, just kind of for, for this specific video purpose to understand this stuff clearly, this is a domain controller right here. Uh, we have a domain controller. Then this is a machine that is joined to this domain controller. So let's go ahead and first open our domain controller. When we say Active Directory, what are we talking about? Usually when you go to the company, they will have a server already uh, running by the systems administrators. You don't really touch that server. Now, when you log into an actual domain controller inside your company, like I mentioned, it could be a virtual machine, which most of the companies these days are going to have it like this exactly. They're going to be using some type of virtualization like VMware Hyper-V. Now, if I'm talking about virtualization and you don't know what I'm talking about, you definitely need to go back to your learning path and finish your first and second course, which is very important in this case because you're going to be missing a lot of skills uh, because in this course, we are not going to talk about um, extreme basics. This, this is the stuff that we have already covered. So now if you come to the, your, your domain controller, usually you'll go to start. And I'm going to make it very simple for now. You can always do this stuff in a more advanced way. But the normal way is click on start, go to the server manager. And then here in this server, you're going to see something different than other servers. Now, when you open a normal server inside your network, it's not going to have some of the features that this server will have. So, for example, if I open the server, you can see it has this ADDS. Um, basically, that is what makes this a domain controller. So, where does it come from? So, when you f uh, install the server fresh operating system like 2019, 12, 16, and you open the add roles and features and you click on next, next, and of course this is not just next, next, next for many people. This is something that a sysadmin will be uh, doing extensive research before they implement something like this. But the problem is that a lot of people when they land a job as a help desk, they don't see this stuff. And you directly work on Active Directory. So when you miss this stuff, you don't know how this thing, this how they created this your learning becomes pretty harder in the future. You may get some of the things, but you just don't know where it's coming from.
So right now, a sysadmin will go over here, they will just click on Active Directory Domain Services and they will configure some of the other stuff, DNS and everything else. They'll just click next, 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 next. When they finish everything, the machine will restart and then they will see something like Active Directory Users and Computers. Now this is what we were talking about. In our lecture, we found out that from here you can manage other machines. Now what are the other machines? In this case, let's say for example, if this help desk DH is a uh, my help desk person and you know here she's sitting somewhere in the office so let's say for example I open this machine right now and I open it like that now if I just totally open my fresh laptop or desktop I'll have to install the operating systems and then I will have to then tell this machine to connect to this active directory because I know certain skills which you're going to learn in our course so basically when you join this computer you what you're doing is you're managing the mach this machines from here so when people join these machines they will automatically show up in this computers folder container this is a container these are all used but of course later on you will find everything about this stuff and you know I just want to make sure that people understand that when we talk about domain join management this is where things are getting managed now so now if this machine is already joined I can do certain things to this machine and to take control over it for example if anybody wants to be logging into that machine let's say I have two users one is working in the morning one is working in the evening I can create two accounts so the first user will log in in the morning the second one will log in in the evening still I will be able to manage both of these users from a single point if two users need something I can definitely manage them if one user is basically leaving and I am now thinking maybe this person shouldn't get to my computer at evening I can just log into this machine from anywhere and I can lock that that person out so I can right click over here and I can say okay you know what I'm just gonna reset the password for this, for this person so then he can he or she can now lock, uh, log in I can do multiple other things with this uh, specific uh, you know um, user I can you know add a certain things to this users for example I can say you know what I'm just gonna give this person rights so then this only one user can install software for themselves but the other user shouldn't do that so you can you see this is the management that we're talking about over here if I don't have something like this then of course if I have a brand new machine I cannot manage it till this machine is on the domain so for example this is a brand new machine right here and you can see this machine is not configured so if I have to configure it, I have to go on to that machine and I have to first do my initial configuration. And if I turn this on at the basic level and don't do anything, I don't I don't manage or I don't join this to the to the domain, then this becomes a, a work group computer. And for now, the only way for me to manage this is to log into this locally and then I will have to create this account over here now and that is the only account I will be able to do things but I will not be able to use my help this account over here which is more powerful account but this is not gonna work because it's not joined to the domain I hope this lab this uh, uh, information this different type of explanation have cleared some of the differences between work group and domain but again this is just a start after this we are going to build an exact same lab that you're seeing right now in our server JSS servers and of course you can use the virtual box to do the same stuff and then you will be able to see the almost the same uh, in your own lab if you want if you prefer that and everything will be done hands-on after this thank you and I'll see you in a different module